having done our risk assessment, our risk analysis, we now turn to risk management and we have to manage the risk. We have to mitigate. I mean, we've done our uh, decisions on acceptance, avoidance, uh, transfer, and so we have our mitigation, which has uh, mentioned many times, is the, the bulk of what we are doing. The uh, the most part, the um, you know the the biggest part of our job, in, in terms of the number of moving parts, certainly. Uh, so we have to make decisions. We have to make selections, choices in terms of what are our risks, what are our threats, what are our vulnerabilities, and therefore, what are the controls, the safeguards, the countermeasures that we put in place to mitigate the risk. And starting off, uh, you know, there is, of course, the, the cost-benefit analysis that we have mentioned, you know, what uh, you know, what's it going to cost us? What are the, the potential risks and losses that we're facing? Um, the, uh, well, one of the standard things we say is you don't put a $500 fence around a $100 cow. Um, you uh, have to be reasonable in, in terms of the, uh, the cost of the safeguard, of the countermeasure. And uh, in this regard, we have to look at the total cost of the control that we're putting in place. What is it going to cost in, in totality? Uh, not just, you know, buying the thing, uh, you know, that the, the purchase price is... Uh, very often only a minor part of, of the total cost. What is the, uh, you know, is there going to be an ongoing cost? Is there going to be a subscription cost involved in this? Um, what is it going to cost us for maintenance? What is it going to cost us for testing? Uh, what is it going to cost us for training the personnel? Um, and, and, you know, the dedication of personnel to operate it. You know, how many person years is this control, this countermeasure, this safeguard going to cost us? How, uh, you know, what? you have to look at the totality. You, you have to look at everything. Um, there are uh, many moving parts to this business. And, and uh, as a, I frequently say, you know, Security is based on simple principles. It's just, you know, the, the implementation that gets complicated, the number of different aspects, uh, the fact that when you do risk analysis, risk analysis is a fairly simple process until you look at the, the number of different risks that you have to consider. The total... Uh, work that you have to do in that regard. And, and so it's the same thing here with regard to the total cost of a safeguard, of a countermeasure. How many aspects do we have to address? How many parts? Um, how many people? Uh, how much time? How much training? Uh, what what is it going to cost us for testing to, on an ongoing basis, make sure that it's working and working properly? Uh, there are additional factors here um, in regard to selecting the control. Um, let's look at uh, issues of accountability and and we're going to talk more about accountability when we get into access control in terms of uh, the issue of identification and 
authorization and accountability um, and uh, those related issues. But in, in terms of the accountability for the safeguard, as I said previously, we've got the, uh, the truism, the issue that um, security is everybody's business, but everybody is nobody's business. Well, somebody has to be held accountable for the operation of the safeguard. Who is it that we are going to nail? Uh, well, we're, we're going to ask them, at least, to um, be responsible for this uh, safeguard, for this countermeasure, for this control, and make sure that it is operating properly. Who, who's going to be accountable for it? Uh, who is properly accountable for it? Um, <coughs> there's another aspect here uh, that we've re referred to as absence of design secrecy. When we have a uh, a security uh, tool, countermeasure, safeguard, control, whatever, um, we want to know how it's working. Um, and, and an awful lot of people, and it's particularly, you know, we'll, we'll see this in crypto, uh, people don't want to tell you because uh, they're thinking, okay, if we don't tell people, then nobody can find out how to, you know, get around this control. Um, no, if it's properly designed, uh, we don't need to rely on design secrecy. So, you know, we, we want minimal secrets involved in this. We, we want to know how it operates. Um, for one thing, uh, we want to know if uh, it stops operating or, or if uh, we get to a, a situation where it's no longer going to be uh, good enough for us. How do we replace it? What do we replace it with? Because we need to know, um, you know, how it's working. If we don't know how it's working, we don't know what to replace it with. Um, audit capability is another aspect involved here. Uh, how do we know? As, as I say, you know, the audit is, uh, is sort of our assurance requirement. How do we know that it's working, that it's doing what we want it to work, um, that it is providing the security that we want? Um, what is the audit capability? Uh, with these uh, and uh, there's many many other uh, aspects of control selection and we'll be getting on with them probably for the next two uh, uh, clips here <laughs>